yes, we are on the move. And yes, we have fenders and lines out, which means we're going into a marina. We are moving to a marina for several reasons. The first is that the Panama City Anchorage in Las Brisas is really rough. There's not really a dinghy dock. The dinghies that are there are pretty beat up because of the tide swing of 20 feet. And if it's low tide, you can't get your dinghy out because there are other dinghies around you. So we have a 12 foot dinghy. We didn't want to take the chance of having our dinghy destroyed right before we make this crossing. So we need to get to a place where we can get on and off the dock. We need to get to a place where we can get things done. And La Playita Marina is right around the corner. We're headed there now. Uh, Brown has had COVID the last few days. He's feeling better, but he also needs to be rehabbing his back from the herniated disc. Can't really do that when it's a- Oh my a... gosh, we're falling apart. Can't really do that when it's a bucking Bronco out in the Anchorage and to get into the dinghy itself is just a lot of work. So we're gonna come over to the marina. I hear that there are half a dozen sloths that come through the marina every night. So I'm really looking forward to that. One of the other reasons we're coming to the marina is the last two days, there has been a brutal fire on the land in Panama City. And our boat is completely covered in black soot. Every single thing has black soot on, including my feet now. Plus I just pulled the anchor up and there was about 10 pounds of mud. And we had to do it fairly quickly because there was a boat in front of us that had to move for us to get at our anchor. There's a ton of mud in the anchor locker. So we're gonna have to fix that too. We're very happy to be getting into a, a marina. But despite running from Las Brisas, we did have one amazing day in the Anchorage. We have a very exciting morning this morning. Our friends, Margie and Chris, my college friends are here on that Princess cruise ship and we're going to meet them right now. We're going to spend the day with them in Panama City and then have them back on the boat. So we're really excited about this. Cannot believe that this is happening. What's the chance of that? It's pretty cool. We had a fabulous day with Chris and Margie, first exploring the old city and then back on the boat to have lunch and relax. So Hello. we. Hello! Yeah. <laughs> so fun! Of course, as always is the case, the day went way too fast. And before we knew it, we were taking them back to the dock so they could return to their larger floating home. Watching. Yeah. We love you! Have a safe trip! It was wonderful staying at the marina where we could address our growing physical ailments as well as tackle our long project list when we felt well enough to do so. Access to Panama City was easy and having a dock to step onto made life so much easier and at the moment we really needed that break. I checked into the ER today because I couldn't breathe. The doctors have said that I have an, an inflammation of lungs due to the toxic smoke that we have been inhaling for the past uh, week. I had some nebulizer treatments in the hospital and they said in three days my symptoms should be alleviated and the tightness in my lungs should be gone. So hopefully this has resolved that problem. Thankfully, before long, we were both on the road to recovery and part of the healing process was slowing down and who better to show us the way than the resident sloths. Every evening around 6 p.m. they woke up from their treetop perch and started their journey into the nature sanctuary to forage for food. Some days we could get lucky and get close encounters with the sloths. Other days, they were above us on the electrical wires, crossing overhead without a care in the world for the cars and people that had stopped to take photos of their every movement. One aspect of life on the Pacific versus the Atlantic that was a huge change for us was the tides. On the Atlantic or Caribbean side, the tidal change was less than two feet. On the Pacific side, the tidal change could be upwards of 25 feet with a spring tide. And we happened to be in the marina during a full moon. So we experienced the greatest of differences and we saw a lot of lines snap. It's incredible to think about the billions of gallons of water that float in and out of this small man-made bay every six hours. We have a 20 foot tidal difference. The slope of this walkway down to the water's edge. It's incredible. 
look at that ramp and look at the height of the poles. Incredible how tall these poles are when it's low tide. We're back at high tide. You can see the angle. It's really hard to explain the violence of the motion of the boat in this marina because of the 20 foot tidal changes, but you can see the line snaps um, here. The snubber from this boat broke last night because of how violent it was um, with the line snapping. So, you know, everyone's trying to do whatever they can to keep the boat from seesawing back and forth, but there's really nothing you can do. Between wind and tidal change, it's just what the boat does. A few weeks ago, Andre repaired this crack in the gel coat, and you can see that repair in a previous episode. But the final two steps we need to take are to paint with gel coat and then sand it down so it's smooth. And today, Brown is painting with gel coat. And everybody, here we are on our boat with the lovely Admiral. And we now have the replacement mat, thanks to Sunrise Yacht Products for helping us out of this situation. So we have to have the replacement because the Admiral has spotted after six months, uh, places where the net itself is coming loose from the stitching. Now, once this starts, it's just gonna get worse and this mat is supposed to last 12 to 16 years and is already having problems. So problems always do exist and we all know that, but it's how you handle these problems that's the most important thing. And we're just really happy with uh, Sunrise Yacht products. Matt's been amazing. Yep, and what they've done is they've shipped at their expense to us in Panama City this beautiful new mat we decided to go with black so sometimes things go wrong sometimes things are not manufactured correctly and what i really appreciate about matt and sunrise is that they've taken responsibility for this and have said at our expense we're going to get you another trampoline and i just want to say thank you so much to matt because he could have made all of these excuses but he didn't so we're really grateful for their their company this is just a weird situation where he said this should have been picked up as it went through production and it wasn't and that's okay it happens so we're just really grateful that he's working with us so we highly recommend to work with them because if they stand behind their product we want to work with someone like that and then what they've done also is they've reconfigured the design of the net to help ensure that this is going to be successful Babe, what are we doing right here? We're going to uh, attach on all four corners first. Is that what they suggested? Yes. So the first thing we did was disconnect our white net from the four corners and secure the black net in its place. Then, as I was pulling the Dyneema out of the white net at the cross beam, I was threading the black net according to the pattern that Matt had sent to us. Then I repeated the process on the port side and again on the starboard side. Because of Brown's herniated disc, we limited his involvement, but he was able to pull the white net out once it was free on three sides. And then I worked on the aft side, starting in the middle and threading out towards starboard. Then I repeated the process from the middle out to the port side. After we finished the threading, then we needed to stretch the net 
and each day pull it in so that it fit better and better. The old net is in the back. Check out what only took a moment, which we thought we'd take several days. And that is our new mat. And right now, it is in the stretching stage. So we're walking around on this and stretching it out, which, gonna, which is gonna enable it to be tightened more. We're gonna use it and then we're gonna tighten it some more. And hopefully that's the last time we'll have to tighten it for quite a while. It's crazy, but if you do the white one, more dirt's gonna show and it reflects back to your eyes and you can't see the water, but we can clearly see the water through here. And supposedly this is gonna be in black. It's gonna last a little bit longer. So we're happy about that. I'm very happy that we've done this as quickly as we have, quicker than the last time. You know, experience has really helped. Plus they included a detailed diagram specifically for our boat. It's just really important that you start well and you have a good plan. Otherwise you're gonna have to keep redoing stuff. It's gonna get frustrating. It's gonna take more time.